Sunset falls in the honey town And the dance is through the blue We feel catch a glimpse of heaven Makes me think of you And even when you're miles away Always on my mind Lord knows you're in my heart When I close my eyes You are holy Precious sense of prayer Flying all through the air While the rain is falling Golden Time to Hey, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, introduce ourselves in just a bit, but um, this is our virtual tour that we're going to be sharing with you folks today. Uh, we're unfortunately not able to allow students to come to campus yet since it's closed to the public, so this is not our most ideal option for students to visit, but of course um, we want you to be safe uh, in our current condition with the pandemic. So we're welcoming students uh, through our virtual way of bringing campus to you. My name is Tracy Nagata. I'm the Campus Visit and Welcome Center Coordinator. And we are here on campus and we do have live campus tour guides that will be taking you on tour. Um, how this is gonna work, you folks are gonna be able to see some images of campus and we'll go live to designated spots throughout the tour. Uh, so you can see a specific tour that we would normally give to you when you were in person. So we're excited to share with you more about our campus. I'm going to have our um, campus tour guide just introduce herself. Um, Lei, if you can just share with us um, a little bit more about uh, what year you are in school, your major, and then um, she's actually remote right now. And then um, We'll have our campus tour guides um, share a little bit more about themselves when we go live with them. Go ahead, Leigh. Okay, thanks, Tracen. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Leigh Aloha. I am currently a sophomore here at UH Manoa, and I'm majoring in philosophy at the moment. And like Tracen mentioned, I am remote, but I am gladly, happily, or yeah, very happy to also chime in on our other campus tour guides who are actually on campus. Awesome, thank you so much. So just wanna give you a little bit of uh, information regarding our virtual campus tour. Uh, we will be highlighting upper campus. So there are parts that you see in this image here that we're not gonna be able to fully mention today, uh, which is the housing area and the athletics complex. Uh, but we do have um, upper campus to feature just since we're limited on time. In the background, you're gonna see Diamond Head there. So just to give you a perspective of where we're located, Manoa Valley is actually in Honolulu. So we're in the capital city of Hawaii. Um, Hawaii itself has eight islands total and we're on Oahu, which is the main island uh, that's more populated with an urban environment. So for those of you who've been to our island before, or if you've seen beautiful pictures of Waikiki, we're literally 10 minutes away. We're 30 minutes away from the airport and of uh, some of the scenic places that students are familiar with. We're about an hour away from North Shore. So we're on the south side of Oahu. Uh, we also are the largest campus in Hawaii. So we have the most academic programs. That also means that we have uh, a lot of majors to share with you today, as well as um, different colleges and schools uh, that surround our campus student body. Um, we have about 17,000 undergraduate students. And we do have quite a bit of graduate programs, including our medical school and our law school. We're the only school in Hawaii that offers those professional programs. Uh, you'll see this white perimeter here. We have about 320 acres. And we are also um, located right off the H1 freeway. So if you've ever uh, been to the surrounding Honolulu area, uh, we are towards the eastbound way right off the freeway on the left hand side. So this is how it's going to be for this tour. Um, you're going to see parts of our quad, our campus center. We're going to highlight our student life and student services building. 
And then parts of McCarthy Mall, which is going to be our academic section of the tour. Uh, we're really excited to also highlight and share with you some of the other places that um, even though we won't be featuring them live today, um, we will talk a little bit more about athletics and housing. And um, in this dome shaped building that you see that's sort of like a moon shape top. Um, that's actually our stand sheriff center for those of you who watch like maybe our basketball or volleyball games. That's where we host a lot of our athletic uh, programs and events on campus graduation takes place there. Uh, and then we'll also feature um, some of our other academic buildings that are being renovated, um, like our life sciences building. Okay, so we're going to head over um, to our first spot. Campus Center and Warrior Rec Center um, is where the heart of campus really is and where our students kind of hang out. Um, Blake, can you share a little bit more about um, what your favorite part about this particular area is? Yeah, for sure. So Campus Center is basically like the heart of camp or the heart of our campus. And I guess my favorite part about it is that it's always going to be lively like you'll always see students walking around or just sitting down probably like sitting on the tables doing homework and there's definitely a lot of eateries on there that's where our main food court is on campus and um, i guess like the main thing i remember about a campus center when i was on campus is that there were always booths around campus or like on campus center and like it would just be all the different clubs just like advertising their clubs and sometimes we have like a farmer's market or even like a thrift shop would occasionally come and we could just shop there so it was always nice on campus center awesome okay so let's check in with our tour guides um can i loop in ira and mckaylin are you guys ready at your um, designated spot Yes, we are ready, Chasen. Okay, we're ready for you too. Go ahead. Okay, sweet. Aloha, my kako. My name is Mikaela Ray, but you guys can call me Eminem, like the candy, not the rapper. I cannot rap. Don't ask me to rap. I'm really, really bad at it, I promise. But anyways, a little bit about me. I'm originally from the island of Guam, but my dad joined the military when I was very, very young. So I moved to Japan, England, Alaska, California, and then finally here for school. So I've been around the world a little bit, and I know a little bit what it's like to move from a different place to the island of Oahu. This is really, really fun. I am a senior studying Pacific Island Studies with a minor in philosophy, and I'm interested in that free law track, and so I'm going through that as well. But yeah, so as Julia mentioned, we are here at Campus Center, which is our heart of campus. As you can see, there are a bunch of students around us, all um, adhering to the COVID CDC guidelines and things like that. But at our Campus Center, we have a variety of things. Like Leigh mentioned, we usually have a farmer's market that used to come here before COVID, and they would come, I think, every like Tuesday and Thursday and bring us fresh produce and you could buy them um, for a like lower price from those local farmers. There's also two eateries over there, Pizza Hut and Stir Fresh. Stir Fresh, you can either make your own poke bowl or make your own stir fry bowl. So I absolutely love food. I'm here all the time. And then also we have our campus center food court, which is right up there. You have a burger bar, salad bar, bento boxes, sushi, sweet lunches, and a bunch of varieties of food. I also saw that they have um, milk teas there now. So that's really cool. So yeah, there's a bunch of different food options up there. You can also use um, your meal plan, which we'll talk about later at that campus center food court. Another few eateries we have here, we have Starbucks, Subway, this to-go place, um, and then some more eateries that are a little bit behind campus center that we'll reach as well. Another cool thing about our campus center is we have a lot of events that happen here. Like Lane mentioned, usually there's booths around here that different clubs will advertise things or will bring in like vendors or student vendors to help promote their businesses as well as have students have options to get things here from um, our university at like this our, um we've had a like movie night where we had like the avengers show like black panther infinity war and like endgame all in succession for free for students and we had like 50 cents popcorn so it was a really really cool thing and we also had like a um a bunch of like local music artists come here and perform for our students um and that was free as well we had that as a welcome back bash so yeah there's a lot of cool things to do at campus center and then over here if we turn around 
This is our W Recreation Center, Warrior Recreation Center, and this is our on-campus gym. It's actually a fairly new building. It was built in the 2010s. And we have a bunch of different workout equipment there. We also have an indoor track, which I believe is 1 13th of a mile. So don't run four miles and think you just ran the fastest mile in your life because it is a little bit more than four laps. We also have ellipticals, treadmills, free weights, things like that. And we also offer, um, what are those called? Athletics classes. So like um, Zumba, as well as like a boxing. And then we also have classes you can take that are off campus, like hiking, surfing, and things like that. But those will cost like an additional um, fee, but usually they cost a lot less than like Waikiki tourist um, events and activities. But yeah, this is pretty much our campus center. And then right over there, we have our bookstore. That's where you're gonna get a lot of your textbooks as well as UH merch. And um, anything you really need for classes, we have a bunch of art supplies there. So if you take some of our, you'll all have everything you need right there. And they also have a list of class materials. So if you go there saying, I'm taking this class, they can back to you, Jason. Thanks so much, Michaelin. Um, so this is how it's going to go. Um, tour guides, if you can switch over to data, um, they're currently using Wi-Fi since we're at Campus Center, but it looks like the connection is cutting out. So we're going to start using our data um, plan to try to um, have you guys hear more clearly. So thank you for bearing with us. Um, just a reminder, we are taking questions um, in our Q&A chat, so um, if you can filter any of the questions that maybe you put in the chat feature, um, just put it in the Q&A. Um, if we're not able to get to your questions specifically today, um, we will be able to answer your questions at the end. So just want to um, let you folks know for that as well, too. Um, we're going to go ahead and move along with the tour. Um, so now that you guys kind of have an idea of how it's going to go, um, we hope that you can join us for the duration of the tour um, as we head to our next spot, which is going to be closer to the Warrior Rec Center and Hemingway Pathway 2. So um, Leigh and I just want to share with you some things that are more academic related. Uh, for those of you who don't know about our current rankings for our university, uh, we're going to highlight some of our academic buildings in just a bit um, that mention also parts of our quad, which is our four original buildings. Um, and then we'll also head over to McCarthy Mall that's going to show you where a lot of our lab classes are. Uh, so most of your courses, when you come to UH Manoa, they are here on campus, but we also have a really cool research station out um, on the east side of Oahu that a lot of students are familiar with that are interested in marine biology. The photo that you see of this island here is called Coconut Island or the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology, also known as HIMB. Uh, it's off the coastline and you do need a boat to get there. And so a lot of our upper division um, students take a summer class, which is a higher level 300 biology course, and um, they do it over the summer. So there's a lot of options for students to participate in like marine option program. We're known for a lot of our agricultural majors too, because we are in a tropical environment and some of our STEM focused majors. We do have quite a bit of focuses even in the arts and creative media, um, but, as far as like what we focus on as a grant university, um, we have four components. So land, sea, space, and solar. That also means that we do get research money for you to study um, with certain professors that are working on special projects. We also are research one. So that also means we're accredited and we focus on you getting internship experience or some kind of practical experience ahead of time. And then on top of that, we also are known for our international business focus. So we tie in the Eastern and Western culture. And uh, we also have lab locations on the other neighbor islands. Um, we're 12th in the nation for physics and astronomy as well. Um, so just to kind of give you some interesting facts um, that a lot of students don't know about. When you think of Hawaii, you think of ocean, right? You think about sustainability, um, culture. So all of that ties into some of the things that we're known for, including travel industry management. Uh, a lot of our students are focused on some of the business elements that we have um, just because of our tourism industry. 
Lei, can you share a little bit more about the culture here in Hawaii and um, some of our language programs? Yes, so as far as languages, we have over 25 language programs. So meaning that we have like a variety of majors and studies and cultural classes that pertain to different uh, subject areas around our location or like the Pacific studies in general. And um, so with that in mind, I believe like that's what makes our campus very unique. It's because we have a wide, for a wide variety of studies pertaining to our location, like with us being a tropical island and everything. And um, yeah, I also wanna add on to what Tracer was mentioning earlier as a, a research one campus, we not only focus on like undergraduates, so we also help our students with graduate studies as well. And it's really just like our students have really hands-on uh, experiences and opportunities. Thanks for sharing, Lee. Um, we're gonna move on to our next location and just check in with our tour guides to see if they're okay. Um, Mikaelin or Ira, how are you guys doing? Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Ira. I am the other campus. Oh, what happened? Oh, what happened? Oh, like that? Oh, you just want to tell <laughs> So sorry, guys. This is all new to us. We're still learning how to do virtual tours. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ira. I'll be your other campus tour guide today. Just a little bit about myself. I was born and raised here on the island of Oahu. I am a nursing student. I'm actually graduating this May. Woo! Um, so if you guys have any questions about nursing or questions in general about uh -E go ahead and put that in the chat and then Trace and Erle can go ahead and answer you guys' questions. So right now we're here at our second stop. So I wanted to show you guys, this is the other part of Campus Center. We're in the back. As you guys can see, there's a sign that says Campus Center. Around the corner over there, that's the ticket information and ID booth. If you guys are planning to come here this fall, this is going to be one of the first places you're going to visit just because this is where you're going to pick up your student ID. Student ID, very important. Make sure you keep it with you at all times because it's basically your life access to the university. So it gives you access to our Warrior Recreation Center, which Michaela mentioned earlier. It gives you access into our volleyball, basketball, football games, which aren't happening in person right now, but hopefully super soon. So let's get vaccinated, everyone. Um, and just stuff like that. Oh, and also your meal plans. So very important. Um, another thing that I want to talk about in this area is Hemingway Hall. In Hemingway Hall, this is where our School of Dental Hygiene students practice their skills. It's actually on the second floor, but on the first floor, there's a Bali restaurant, which is a Vietnamese French cuisine restaurant. So in there, they have spring rolls, pho, summer rolls, all of that good stuff. Um, I'm not sure about their hours right now, but pre-COVID, that was my spot. I always love to get my lunch there, so you'd find me there all the time. And then right around the corner of Hemingway Hall, you'll see Sinclair Library. Sinclair Library adjusted their hours due to COVID, but uh, same thing, you can still go ahead and study in there with your friends. It's a little bit different now just because they, ke they keep track of where you sit and then they clean it after. But other than that, I still love to study at Sinclair because my bed is at home and I can't study at home. So I love to come here to study. But that is, that is it about this spot. We can go ahead and go back to you, Tracen and Lay. Awesome. Thanks, Ira. So in case you missed it, Ira is actually a nursing student. Um, she's in her senior year. So um, congratulations to her or what we say, uh, she's doing clinicals as well, too. So she's been helping vaccinate um, for the pandemic um, situation, which is awesome. So she gets real life um, experience being in, um, in the situation of working with real nurses. Uh, so she really enjoys her major. Uh, we're going to move on with the rest of the tour. Uh, so we're going to head over to our uh, parts of our Hawaii Hall and our uh, Queen Liliokalani Student Service Building area uh, to just talk a little bit more about um, academics and student life. But um, we're going to take a moment to talk more about student housing as well as uh, parts of our locations in athletics. Uh, so uh, we'll have Lei share a little bit more about the commuter life um, since she uh, is currently uh, 
commuting back and forth um, to school, which a lot of our local students do as a feasible option to save money. Uh, but we also have opportunities for students to live on campus, whether you're a local student or you're out of state, international, um, this is open to everybody to apply to. It's not required for you to live on campus, so it's just an option. And most of our freshmen live in the Hale Aloha Towers and um, transfer students can decide to live in the upperclassmen apartments or we do have suite style living, but this is a typical aerial shot of what housing looks like. This is what a room looks like for incoming freshmen. So we have double occupancy and we also include a meal plan for all of our students who um, don't necessarily live in the apartment complex. So that stretches from Hale Aloha Towers to Gateway, Freer Hall and um, upper campus housing like Kahavai, um, La Lima, they also have um, meal plans that are connected to their contracts. As far as the community living here um, in Hawaii or in the living situation on campus, we're very family oriented. So our residential assistants actually plan events on the weekends. There's movie nights, concert nights on upper campus that you can attend. And um, they also have like a game room on, on campus as well too. So there's a lot of things to do in the Honolulu area and ma it makes it very convenient for students to access their courses and their classes uh, and do some tutoring and study sessions. Our academic advisors also um, are heavily involved in uh, allowing our students to get that support while they're on campus, including our counseling services. So that's available to you if you decide to um, live on campus as an extra addition um, to the other services that we offer year round. We also have learning communities. So if there's a certain major that you really wanna go into, or let's say that you're interested in a language, uh, there are certain learning communities that you can residentially be a part of uh, as part of your uh, floor. So that means that you're grouped together with those students. Some of them may be in your classes and uh, you are all part of the same type of um, environment that you're interested in. So it, it gives you that community-based feel that a lot of students are looking for. Um, so just a reminder, if you are an accepted student and you are thinking about uh, applying for housing, you need to do that by May 1st. And we also recommend that you deposit with us by May 1st, which is a requirement to get priority housing to get a contract. So remember to do those two steps. Um, also, if you're a prospective student in your senior year as an um, incoming freshman, if you're applying as a freshman, um, you'll get an opportunity to apply for housing. Or if you're a transfer student or international student, um, you'll also get uh, an opportunity to apply for housing, whether you apply for fall or spring. So just know that this is an option and you follow our accepted student checklist once you're admitted to us. Okay, let's check in with um, Ira and McKaylin in just a bit, but I do wanna pass it over to Leigh. Um, just wanna prompt them. We're gonna tune in to you guys in a couple minutes. So if you can prep and get ready and then um, Leigh, can you just share what life is like when you commute? Yeah, so um, basically, I guess you could say like I'm a pro commuter. <laughs> I took the bus, like the city bus, the sh rainbow shuttle on campus, and I even drove to campus as well. So I, um, our, uh, Ira mentioned that our student ID is it's really helpful, and I really want to place an emphasis on that because it will get you on the city bus for free, as well as our rainbow shuttle on campus for free. So the Rainbow Shuttle on campus takes you anywhere on campus, as well as a few neighborhoods a mile off of campus. So if you are planning on housing off campus, I believe it will take you to some neighborhoods. And you basically just show your student ID and hop on. Uh, the same goes for our city bus, or it's called the bus. You just show your student ID, hop on, and it can take you anywhere on campus. Um, I believe I saw a question about uh, how to commute from campus to Honolulu. Um, our campus is in Honolulu, but if you are planning on getting to like other places like the mall, the city bus can definitely take you to the mall as well. 
And I also want to recommend that you download the Rainbow Shuttle app as well as the City Bus app because the app includes an, a real-time GPS so you know exactly where your bus is and what time it's going to arrive. It also includes what or which stops they're going to be stopping at and it also makes or helps you make sure that you get on the right bus so that's really helpful and if you are planning on bringing a, bringing a car over on the island um, I don't really recommend only because I heard it's really expensive so the city bus and the rainbow shuttle is going to be like your number one best friend on getting places around campus. Thanks, Lei. Okay. Oh, oh I was just going to say, we have a quick question that asks, uh, how far does campus transportation go around the island? And would you recommend oh. getting a bike at all? Uh, so for the campus transportation, as for the rainbow shuttle, um, it goes anywhere on campus, but I also know it goes um, like neighborhoods off or neighborhoods that are a mile off of campus. So that's how far it would go. And as for trans, or sorry, for transportations on campus, do you mean like bus or like, sorry, bikes, skateboards, and a lot of people ride mopeds as well. We do have like this Beaky bike, I believe that's what it's called on campus. And you can like rent, Tracen, I think it's called renting. You could rent the bike and yeah. So you can rent the bike and if you, you can basically ride it anywhere on campus. Like you don't be afraid to like skateboard or scooter or I even see people like riding their hoverboards around campus. So it's definitely a skateboard friendly or scooter friendly campus. Awesome. Yep. Biki is um, in the surrounding Honolulu area. So if you need to run errands to go get groceries, um, it's all over. It's a partnership bike companies, meaning that we have them stationed on our campus, but it's throughout all of the city. So you can actually uh, dock in and dock off at any given spot. And um, they have rental plans. Sometimes it's monthly, sometimes it's annually, but it just depends what's more preference to you. Sometimes people just want to do a one-time use. Um, so we do have those stations all over campus. Okay, let's check in with Ira and McKaylin. Are you guys good for your next stop? Yeah, we're good right here. Um, okay, so going on to our next stop. <laughs> Right here is beside us. This is where at Hawaii Hall. Hawaii Hall is actually the first building here at our university campus. It actually, around 1907, I believe, is when our university was founded. And so this building was constructed around 1911, if I'm correct. Tracy, and correct me if I'm wrong. And basically, this university or this building had pretty much everything that our university um, held at the time dorms, classrooms, offices, all of that. So if we would have taken a tour back in 1911, I would have given you guys a tour of this one building and we would have been done in like five to 10 minutes and you guys could have gone about your day and done whatever you wanted to do. But now we've upgraded to around 320 acres of campus. So it's been a, a small upgrade to our beautiful campus now. So if we want to pan over this way. This is our QLC, our Queen Lulu Kalani Center for Student Services. Cool fun fact, Queen, Queen Lulu Kalani was actually the last reigning monarch here in Hawaii. And so this building was named directly after her. QLC is going to hold a lot of those student services that you're going to need when you come here as a student, such as our office, the admissions, as well as financial aid. If any of you guys are going to receive the GI Bill, the Veterans Affairs office is there, office of registrar, parking office, all of those things. And we also have the Manila Career Center. So I don't know if Ira can see it, you can see a green banner in those windows. And that's where you're going to go if you're interested in getting like an on-campus or off-campus job. They can help you with um, filling out resumes or applications, as well as like setting up mock interviews. So if none of you have like, applied for like an actual job, you can go into that office and they'll guide you through that process. It's a really cool opportunity that students have. I'd also like to point out, we also have an LGBTQ plus office and a women's center in that building as well. So it's a lot of cool things. And then right over here, this is our Viney Circle. This is home to our rainbow shuttle that we've talked about. It also um, has a lot of different areas that you were gonna view at the campus right after but yeah Barney Shaker is going to be a lot of where our rainbow shuttles are going to park and so if any of you need to take those rainbow shuttles you can come to the stop and they'll most likely take you to like student housing or to your next class but yeah this is our area back to you Tracen. 
Awesome. Okay, we're going to head back over. If um, Just a reminder, when our campus tour guides are live at their um, placement, you can actually go in speaker view. Um, we do put them in a spotlight mode so that it should um, actually showcase on your screen. But sometimes if you're in gallery view, you're going to see everyone's screen on top of that. So um, just a suggestion, if you can be in speaker view, you'll be able to see the full screen with our tour guides. Okay, we're gonna move along. Um, we do have a couple more spots to show you. We're gonna head towards McCarthy Mall, um, which is our uh, long area of academic buildings. And then um, we will end on the east-west roadside, um, highlighting some of our um, newer buildings like the Life Sciences Building. So this is an image that we wanna share with you about um, student life that happens outside of the classroom experience. Uh, we, of course, uh, are in this um, situation right now where we're not hosting live games, but this is what a typical stadium looks like on the weekend. So uh, Monday to Friday, you have your courses. Sometimes we have lab classes on Saturday, depending on your major. Uh, but as far as like what to do on the weekends, am I going to get island fever um, if I'm not from Hawaii? That's, those are some common questions that we get all the time. Um, you know, especially for those who maybe uh, they live farther away from the Honolulu area, what is there to do? Uh, so I'll have Lei share a little bit more about her student experience and some of the things that she does uh, that are related to school and just for fun, um, things that she likes to do. Um, but just know that a lot of our students always consider going to some kind of athletic event. Throughout the year, um, we host our football games. Uh, previously, it was at the Aloha Stadium, but we are currently actually transitioning to um, having football games at our TC Ching Field, which is on campus. So that's exciting. Uh, we're also division one for our athletic programs, and we're known for volleyball, both wahine, women's and men's. Uh, so we rank nationally, which is one of the highlights of our campus, just because it's so exciting um, since we don't have any professional teams here in Hawaii, a lot of our students and families and the community comes out just to participate um, in our arena. We have over 10,000 seats for students um, to participate in, and they have their own section where they get to uh, be a part of the Manoa Maniacs. Uh, it's really exciting for our students to even participate in some of our other programs like marching band, concert band, dance team, uh, and we even have intramural sports. So if you're not at that D1 level, uh, you can still find things to do that create your interest. We have over 200 clubs and organizations um, like McKaylin mentioned earlier. So Lei, can you just share some of the things that you can do on the weekends that students can look forward to? Yes, so definitely you are on an island. So the beach is one thing. It's definitely, I'm pretty sure you're gonna go there. <laughs> I mean, you're on an island, but a lot of our students do go to either Waikiki only because it's one of the closest beaches on our, or one of the closest beaches to the camp, uh, to campus, from campus. But I did mention earlier, if you want to go like around the island and just sightsee, the city bus, you can hop on the city bus, you can even go all the way to the north side of the island. The North Shore is definitely a popular spot if you want a different view or a different beach for the weekend. Um, but yeah, uh, Tristan did mention that our campus is, um, we hold like a lot of athletics and or athletic events. And she mentioned the Manoa Maniacs. They usually put on like cool activities for students and they give away things. So it's just fun to connect with local students as well as new students. And our campus really just has like that community feel. Um, and it's a very Hawaii vibe, I wanna say. We're pretty laid back and everyone, it's really diverse as well. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a campus that has a community feeling to it, uh, UH Mono is definitely that uh, campus. And yeah, so don't be afraid to like just reach out and make friends. You're definitely gonna see a lot of people from other uh, states, even from other countries. We do have international students as well and make friends with 
local people because they definitely know where the good spots are on campus or on the island as well. Thanks, Lei. Yep, so this could be you in the future. Um, for those of you who are perspective and are thinking about applying for fall 2022, you're a junior in high school right now, um, your future looks bright. Uh, we will have our applications open hopefully in September of this year. So we encourage you to apply early. Um, we are also going test optional for fall 2022 as well. Um, so uh, for those of you who are transitioning from high school, um, and we encourage all types of students to apply to us, even transfer students or international students. So if you're also tuning into this uh, virtual event, um, this could be you, you never know in the future. So we highly encourage you to stay in touch with us. Okay, we're gonna move on to McCarthy Mall just to see um, if Ira and McKaylin are ready for their next stop. Are we good, McKinney? Okay. Hello, Uncle. Sorry. <laughs> There's a uh, golf cart passing by. Alrighty. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our last stop of the tour, actually. So I'm just going to go ahead and point out where we are in perspective to where our last stop was, which is where McKaylin talked. So across the street, right over there, that's actually a full view of Hawaii Hall. And then right over here, that's QLC, or also known as Queen Lilio Kalani Center for Student Services. If we pan right over there, um, if you keep walking down that curvy road, that's where it leads to Campus Center. Okay, so like I said, we're here at McCarthy Mall. McCarthy Mall is the main walkway here on campus. This is where you find like a lot of skateboarders, scooter people. Sometimes people use Heelys here. As Blay mentioned, a lot of people like to use wheels on campus. But, oh, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay all right where were we oh yeah so we're here at mccarthy mall mccarthy mall it's um not a shopping mall but we i like to say it it's called mccarthy mall because of how busy it is well not right now because it's in COVID time but right now um it's kind of empty just because a lot of students are in remote classes right now but mccarthy mall is surrounded with a bunch of our academic buildings that i'm gonna go through as we walk down this walk this walkway but I want to point out Webster Hall. So Webster Hall is home to our School of Nursing and Dental Hygiene, aka my second home. Uh, before COVID, we actually had access to our student lounges in there um, like all the time. So this is where my friends and I would like to spend our late nights preparing for our exams or preparing for skill checkoffs. Uh, but now you do have to sign up, but that's okay. We still go. And then on the second, oh sorry, on the third floor, that's where we hold our THSSC, which stands for Translational Health Sciences Simulation Center. So it's our floor that looks that looks like an actual hospital. We have mannequins in there. Uh, we can hear their heartbeats, their lung sounds. You can listen to their stomach. They can cough. Uh, they can vomit. All of that good stuff. You name it. We have a baby mannequin. We have a child mannequin an adult mannequin, and we have a pregnant mannequin that can actually give birth to a real, not a real baby, but a mannequin baby. So it's so cool. That's actually like my favorite rotation in nursing school. It was the obstetrics rotation. So a lot of mother baby stuff. So um, all of that nursing stuff you can find in here. Then we can go ahead and walk down. On my left, your right, this over here is our art building. Uh, here at UH Renal, we do have a bunch of art fields that we offer. So there's uh, glass blowing, painting, sculpting, all of that good stuff can be found over here. Um, fun fact, there are three floors to this building and then each floor has a designated primary color. So on the ground floor, all of the floors are, oh, sorry, all of the doors are red. On the second floor, all of the doors are yellow. And then on the third floor, all of the doors are blue. Right now we are going through, through some construction in McCarthy Mall, so pardon this wooden wall, but behind this wooden wall, this is Snyder Hall. Snyder Hall is home to our microbiology department. And then right next to Snyder Hall, we have Edmondson Hall, which is home to our biology department. So what's really cool about our biology department is on the ground floor, it mainly consists of our lab classrooms. So in those labs, we have really special materials such as our student-proof tables. So by student proof, I mean that students can light it on fire. They can 
spill a acidic chemical on it, bang a hammer on it as hard as they want, no matter how strong you are, it won't budge. That's why it's called student proof. And then they actually have like these ventilator thingies hanging from the ceiling. Excuse my vocabulary. I don't know what they're called, but um, as you guys have probably done in school, I'm pretty sure all of you have dissected an animal before, like a preserved animal, and it's soaked in formaldehyde. And formaldehyde has a really strong odor. So what that vent does is it actually absorbs the odor. So students don't have to smell it because I'm one of those students that get really nauseous when I smell from all the time. So Edmonton Hall, very, very special and a good resource for our biology students or marine biology students. Oh, running out of breath. Okay, <laughs> right over here, this is Bilger Hall. Bilger Hall is home to our chemistry department. Uh, so this is where a lot of our students uh, have our lecture classes for chemistry. Um, also in the Bilger edition, that's where they hold the chemistry labs. In the chemistry lab, students are required to wear closed-toed shoes and goggles, which you can purchase, oh, goggles you can purchase at the bookstore or online. But the main reason that makes Builder so special is the Learning Emporium. So here on campus, we do have multiple tutoring centers, but I love Builder Hall because it has the Learning Emporium. The Learning Emporium is another tutoring center that we have that mainly tutors in STEM subjects, so math, chemistry, biology, and it's separated by tables. So if you need help in chemistry, then you sit at the chemistry table. Just short story, got a C on my first exam in chemistry, wasn't so happy about it. So I had to visit the tutoring center and then ended up with an A and all's well, that ends well, it went really well. <laughs> um, right over there, that is Keller Hall with the stained glass windows. Keller Hall is home to our math department math if you guys love it then you love it <laughs> and then connecting to keller hall that's our physical science building right over here this is hamilton library hamilton library is the largest research library in the state of hawaii so we uh Monoa students are so fortunate to have this facility here for us as a resource it is one floor down and four floors up and it has the largest asian pacific collection in the world. So again, we are very fortunate to have this building here for us. We do have com uh, computers, printers, scanners, whatever you need, it's gonna be in here as well. I also like to call this place the coldest place on campus because it's super, super cold. I don't live on the mainland, but I'm sure it's pretty cold where you guys are. So this is the coldest it's ever gonna get when you're here in Hawaii too. Uh, so you find a lot of students wearing jackets or having a blanket when they study or sleep here. I'm just kidding, we don't sleep. Uh, maybe some of us, okay. Um, and then, oh, also another thing I wanna mention is we do have study rooms in there as well. So if you and a, a couple of friends ever wanna prepare for an exam, you guys can actually reserve study rooms for up to three hours at a time. Okay, and then right over here, these pyramid looking steps. This is what leads to the entrance of Hamilton Library. And all, not only does it lead to the library, but another eatery on campus. So that eatery is called Paradise Palms. Paradise Palms has a bunch of different food vendors such as Panda's Express. They have a crepe cafe, an Indian food cafe, Dunkin' Donuts, all of that good stuff. Only down part is Paradise Palms does not correlate with the student meal plan. So you can't swipe your ID card to get your meals. You have to pay with regular cash or card. But other than that, really good food here if you're ever craving the food that's in there. Okay, um, right over here is our new and beautiful life sciences building. It's so, so pretty. I love it. Unfortunately, I'm a nursing student and I'm a senior, so I won't have any classes in there ever. But <laughs> right now I am, like, when I first came to campus after a while, the first place I visited was the life sciences building. And oh my God, it's so pretty. The first place I visited was the bathroom and the bathrooms are Really nice, took a nice selfie in there. But if any of you future biology students uh, end up coming here, you're probably gonna have a class in there and I'm so jealous of you. It was actually built uh, just last semester or finished, it was finished last semester. So you can see a lot of students utilizing it now. There's a bunch of labs in there and there's also student lounge in there so students can study. But of course you have to be socially distant and wear a mask at all times when you're here on campus. Other than that, Folks, we have reached the end of McCarthy Fall. I'm out of breath, as you guys can tell. This is the first time I've done it in a while. So 
thank you guys so much for joining me, Kaylin and I on our tour today. We hope to see you very soon and enjoy the rest of your day. Mahalo. Thanks, Ira. Okay, so we're gonna actually open it up for um, our Q and A portion. Um, Amber, if I can just um, ask for your assistance a little bit to see where we are with the questions. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and kick it off. Um, I know we've gotten a lot of questions. Uh, audience, just so you guys know, we have over 400 people attending and we've had over uh, 200 questions. So please be patient with us as we go through this. Uh, so some fun questions for our campus tour guides is uh, island fever a thing? And is there a, uh, what are different ways to get involved? Hey, I'm gonna have you take this one if that's okay. Yeah. Okay, so is island fever a real thing? Um, I've actually lived on Hawaii my whole life, so I never really experienced like leaving off island and missing it. But a lot of my friends who did leave for college, they definitely had island fever and they ended up, or a lot of them ended up coming home and, you know, transferring to UH Manoa, transfer to UH Manoa only because they really did miss home. The island is really beautiful. So I understand why they miss it. <laughs> and as for getting involved on campus, there are a lot of ways to get involved on campus. Um, one of the biggest ways is joining a club. So our clubs range from academic to cultural to fun quirky ones. And just a few examples, we are a few examples would be like, we have this uh, Katipunan club. So it's like a Filipino club. And um, we do a lot of like events. I remember our, the, the last semester that I was in it, in my Filipino club, uh, we actually had like an outing on the beach and we all just brought like different types of Filipino foods and we even did like play Filipino games so it was really nice and fun and yeah um another example of a fun quirky one is we have like this Nicki Minaj fan club um I'm not sure what they do there but actually it's called a Nicki Minaj twerking fan club I guess that's I can only imagine what they do during their meetings um we also have like a sandwich making club. I heard that they made sandwiches and gave it out to the poor or the homeless, I mean. And yeah, so again, it's really easy to get involved on campus. If you do not have a club that you find interesting or can't find a club that you want, it's also really easy to start your own club. So yeah, you just need like six other members. And um, I believe, a professor or an advisor to help you start that club. Um, I know we had a question about intramural sports. Tracen did touch up on that. We do have intramural sports. If you are not like um, part of our like D1 clubs, our sports, we do have intramural sports. I know we have like soccer. A few of my friends joined that. Unfortunately, I did not join any, which is kind of like a regret. So I also suggest joining intramural sports. Um, what other questions do we have? Uh, does the university have Greek life? Um, I want to say it's not as big as other universities, but we do have like frats. And I know one of the biggest ones that we have on our campus would be like our business frat. So that's nice to know. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say kind of uh, going off of some of the questions, I'm gonna go ahead and jump ahead just cause I know we've gotten uh, a lot of repeat questions. Uh, so kind of gonna bring Tracen in for this question uh, is a lot of people are curious about campus, campus tours, I know with COVID, it has been a weird year for everyone. So Jason, would you be able to expand a little bit more about what campus is like currently right now and what we are predicting that will be in the future? And I know everything's still kind of uncertain, but if you can clarify that. Yeah, of course. Um, so we are in this 
mode where um, similar to spring semester, we are trying to convert courses where we can offer some hybrid and in person. Uh, we will be offering our class availability. It's actually online already. So um, if you were to go to our website and um, click on the registrar's um, website, they actually have um, what's called a semester calendar. And uh, they also have links to our class availability. Um, we will be publishing that too, as far as like information about that. If you're you're an accepted student um, in the introduction that we will be giving we're going to share more campus updates uh, for that session but just want to let you know that we are doing a mixture of hybrid and um, in person so uh, both and then also online um, most of our courses will be offered in that format um, and we will have a bulk of our courses online but as far as like services um, that's going to be available in the fall, um, we have plans to reopen. So um, in that case, you know, you'll have access to some of the departments. Um, so what we're looking towards for the summer is a slow reopening um, for our departments to get settled and ready for fall. As far as like when we're going to be offering full tours, um, we're projecting hopefully towards um, the end of summer, but really it's it's hard to say um, as of right now when that will be fully announced just because of the current vaccine rollout and um, figuring out the class availability of how we're going to schedule classes. Um, so once our uh, students who are continuing start registering for classes, which will happen um, from early to mid April, then we'll have a better idea to plan forward on what they're looking to sign up for. Sometimes, uh, especially for the degree planning for the students that need to graduate on time, um, we wanna make sure that they are getting the labs or the in-person attention that's needed for their degree to actually be qualified to finish. So those are some of the things that we're taking note of. And then we are slowly um, reopening as far as like what classes are going to be available um, for incoming students. So um, we will have more clarity and there will be more announcements that will be sent to you folks. Um, but for those of you who are accepted that are eager to find out right now, um, we recommend that um, for those of you who signed up for accepted student receptions, um, and we do have one also upcoming in on on April 17th. We recommend that you attend that one um, as well because we will be sharing those announcements um, for the 28th of March as well as um, April 17th. That I can confirm um, that we will be um, discussing those topics um, since we were notified um, that those are going to be happening during the event. So. Um, I know that it's a little bit gray. Everyone's like, what's happening? Orientation is gonna be online, um, but we can share with you some announcements as they come through to our office. Yeah, and then I know there's been a lot of questions as well about housing, and I know naturally that is, you know, up in the air as well. Um, do you have any recommendations if students are interested in having a roommate or what the next steps that you would recommend are? I was gonna say, yes. I was gonna, the most recent, you got it, okay, perfect. <laughs> oh, sorry, yeah, sorry. Um, our connection kind of cut out and um, I let one of my tour guides go to class. <laughs> um, as far as uh, just like what's, uh, you know, figuring out who, so we, we have um, events or like uh, platforms, I should say, that students can connect um, through our Discord and um, a lot of our students kind of get to know each other that way. Um, but as far as like the roommate situation, housing also uh, has a location on their application where you can request each other. Um, that's an option that a lot of our students partake on just because it gives you um, a way for us to match you up, right? So like we do have a session that will be upcoming as far as like talking to housing. Um, we do have a webinar that's coming up soon, right, Amber? 
Yes, I was going to say for anyone interested, we do have a uh, student housing webinar coming up next Wednesday, exact same time, same, same place you register for this one. We'll definitely make sure to send out uh, plenty of notifications and publicize it online. Uh, so definitely those, I know there was probably over 50 different student housing questions. Uh, I know we're kind of coming to the end of our time right now, but do not worry. I encourage you guys to definitely attend our student housing Warrior webinar next week. Uh, we'll be joined by Kenny, who's one of their representatives. He'll be able to help answer a lot of questions and kind of let you guys know where they are at in the planning phases for fall 2021. And just, just a reminder, it is still pretty early. It is only March. Uh, the semester's still uh, pretty much exactly five months away from today. So five months ago, we didn't really know what was happening with COVID. Uh, right now, it's going to a fantastic direction. So we're hoping to continue that. So he'll be able to give um, more of an insight to that. And for those looking for the Discord link, I got you, I'll go ahead and post that right now as well. Um, Tracy, would you be able to share with students kind of about if housing is guaranteed, are they required to live on campus? What is the expectations as far as that? Yeah, we can definitely go into that portion. Um, so it's not required for students to live on campus. It's always an option, but if you wanted to live off campus, you're free to do so. Um, so housing is not 100% guaranteed. And, and what that means is that you do need to do certain steps to make sure that you get a housing contract. Um, so you do need to apply to our student housing by May 1st. And then those who do that step and also deposit, meaning they turn in their intent to enroll with us, or um, if they attend one of our accepted student receptions, then um, they are offered um, a way to en enroll with us. And by doing that, those two steps, by applying to housing, enrolling with us, um, you will get a contract in May. And at that point, then you have to sign off on a contract. It's kind of like a lease, right? So if you're renting a space, you do have to sign off before you actually move in. So that's where that step takes place in May. Um, in order to do that, um, we recommend that you folks who um, have been admitted already and um, you have been sent the accepted student checklist, it's also on our home page. So if you click on accepted students, um, it'll take you to this 11 step checklist uh, with what you're supposed to be doing. Currently right now we're on steps one to five. So you create your UH user account. And then on step number five, it gives you directions on how to apply for student housing. So this is the perfect window to do that. It's open uh, for students to apply for housing now. Um, you do need to be admitted to us. So for those of you who um, already received that accepted student checklist and um, you're ready to move forward, I suggest that you submit that um, before May 1st. Um, prospective students, you know, it's a, a little bit early in the game to apply to us as well as apply for housing. So you still have, um, you don't have to worry about that right now. And then I know some students are waiting for the admissions decisions. Uh, so um, for those of you who are still in that, in, in that time period and you apply to us, um, we are processing our applications as quickly as possible. Uh, we did get more applications this year, so we appreciate you being patient with us, but we do have a virtual front desk that's on our homepage. So you're welcome to connect me, use that green button, and then also um, just get some information about um, how to enroll, or if you just have questions about the university, that's um, something that you can utilize under the We've Gone Virtual section of the page. Um, so that one is um, manoa.hawaii.edu. If you click on the admissions tab, it'll take you straight to where you need to go. And you can either go to our accepted student checklist or a virtual front desk. Um, they, there's links in the chat that you can connect with us. So if you have any other questions in the future, um, you can screenshot that, copy and paste, uh, whatever is going to help you bookmark those pages. Um, but yeah, just wanted to kind of highlight that. You can connect with our admissions counselors too. If you go to our admissions page and click on explore, there's an events tab or meet your recruiter. We do offer one-on-one -on -one appointments. Um, so even after this virtual tour, um, if you have additional questions about applying to us or being 
um, being admitted to us or enrolling with us. Um, those are some ways to connect. Uh, but yeah, we're hitting time. So um, Amber, if you can just maybe, um, if we can just wrap up with any of the questions or anything else. Yeah, I would say just going to wrap up with one last question is, uh, what is your favorite part of the UH Manoa campus? Thanks to the person who asked that, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, Leigh, do you want to share a little bit? I do. Uh, so my favorite part on campus would probably be the sustainability courtyard. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to show it during our campus. But it is a beautiful spot on campus where we have tables set out and I usually like to just sit there or while waiting for my next uh, lecture to start and catch up on some work. And there are a lot of food trucks around campus. So the eatery is great. And yeah, that's my favorite thing about campus. <laughs> awesome. Um, so thank you so much to everybody for joining us for the virtual tour. Um, we know that um, it was a different experience, but we appreciate you hanging in with us um, as we kind of transition into this virtual component. Um, if you folks have any other questions, feel free to um, connect with us in the ways that we mentioned. Um, otherwise, we will be offering other types of events similar to this, um, hopefully over the summer or um, just ways for you guys to connect. And we look forward to hopefully um, reopening in the fall with our services. Yeah, thank you everyone. Aloha, we appreciate it. And definitely be sure to look out for, we're gonna be sending out an email uh, after this, uh, give us a, usually about 24 hour turnaround or so. We'll send you a link with a, a the recording as well as a link to a survey. So definitely let us know. Uh, we'll definitely, how we're doing, uh, if you have any suggestions for future webinars, we're all ears for that. We appreciate your patience as we did have over 250 different questions asked. You can sell our toes, I love it. But we hope you guys have a wonderful day. Aloha and we'll talk to you soon. Mahalo you guys. <laughs>